and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm renovating some uh, bee nukes. Yeah, I'm a beekeeper, one of my other hobbies. These are just five frame nukes. They were based on the online design from Dave Cushman. If you Google that, you can find him. But here we go. I built these last year. Now I've had a year to work with them. I realise there's some flaws in how I've built them. So yeah, just taking just the bee frames out there. Um, those frames are where the queen live. So I work on British Standard. Um, yeah, I'm just peeling off one of the uh, bodges I had to do because I screwed up. But anyway, yeah, I work on British Standard uh, beehives. Um, the brew box is a lot bigger than the super that the honey's stored in. And so I'm just taking that off. Essentially, what all I'm going to do here today is just take these the front and back off. Um, turn it around, take off a spacer, and then re, uh, redo a front. So that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, and that's all I'm doing. I'm just uh, undo everything and flip it over. And now for this side, I tend to use Torx header screws. Stop some uh, splitting out or shredding, however you want to call it. I know the proper name, I just can't remember it off the top of my head now. I've got a microphone in front of me. Yeah, Phillips heads, they, uh, they tend to shred up a little bit. Strip, that's the word I'm looking for. Tend to strip off. So, here we go. And the last few screws. There we go, that's the last one. Take them all out. And hopefully the, uh, the front should just pop out there. There's a hole drilled in the base for the bees to get in and out. But I use these boxes mainly for swarm capture. Put them out with some, uh, not so much queen bait, but it's like a, uh, I use a lemongrass oil. It mimics the pheromone that the queen gives off. And that coupled with, as you saw there earlier, um, old old frames, the sm that smell, the smell of previous bees, wax, honey, it makes it an enticing environment for the, a swarm to go into. They re kind of recognise it as a, viable home so yeah just took that last screw out out the base there and then hopefully ready to flip out the front there you go you can see the entrance hole there and that spacer that spacer's got to come off and then just pop that out i've uh used linseed oil to preserve the wood on the outside of the box there that's that yellow stain so yeah me realizing that spacer's got to come off and away we go. Yeah, it's not the most interesting video I've ever produced or will ever produce. I'm still relatively new at this. So we're getting there anyway. Learning as we go. So there it goes to the front. I'll just, uh, yeah, just doing a test fit there with some of the, one of the old B frames. B, high frames, sorry. I keep saying B frames are not the high frames. You get asked so many questions about beekeeping by people when they find out. You just have to... Just remember that they don't know the technical terms for stuff. There's no more, no point in me going on about queen excluders and drone lane brood and short brood and God knows what else. As long as they get the general gist, I'm happy. They're happy. So yeah, so I'm just testing everything up there. And there we go. Screw everything back together. Yeah. You can see the old original holes there. I'll just use them as a rough guide. And come back in a little bit front. I say I use Torx bits that are self-tapping, self-drilling. They've got a little flange on the tip. Drill holes through. Though usually I do like to drill a pilot hole first. And go a couple of mil smaller than the actual screw you're using. So if you've got a four mil bit, a four mil screw, sorry, I try and use a two mil drill bit and you get the general gist. You don't want to be going too far with your pilot holes in width, -wise, width ways because otherwise there's obviously not enough wood there for the screw thread to actually bite in you know you wouldn't use a three mil drill bit to make a pilot hole for a four mil screw not like me personally anyway i'm sure there's plenty of professional woodworkers that would tell you different well, it's like beekeeping you might have one question if you've got a hundred beekeepers you'll get a hundred different answers <laughs> So yeah, and that's pretty well much the front done. 
So now here we go with the back. It's basically exactly the same performance as before. So I'll not bore you with that too much and we'll just skip on ahead to the next part, the next part of it. Yeah, there we go, everything's all done. Now I'm gonna put all the frames back in. You'll see in a minute. And so this is what we call a five frame nuke. I don't know if you can notice there, but as I'm putting them away, there's a strip of wax along the top. With these frames, because they're old, I haven't used a full sheet of wax. I've just put a thin strip along the top just to give the bees a guide to, you know, to what to build up to. I think one of them falls off. Yeah, one of them had fallen off. So. I can't remember why I put that there. <laughs> yeah, probably because I was going to fit it back onto the frame later. Yeah, and that's it completed pretty much. So I'm happy with that. Now I've just got to do some end caps. Here we go, let's get everything sorted, get me uh, get my cupboard out, bench hook, I believe is the proper term for it. Wander off to the wood pile, and this is just some literally just some scrap pieces, I think it's one and a half, a quarter inch or something. So I just want an end cap to fit over the front of the hive there, front of the hive, front of the nuke, sorry. Yeah, in front of the nuke, just to stop the, the frames from moving about. See, there off camera, I'm just measuring up. I'm measuring up the front of the hive there, transferring it over onto my stock. I'm going to make a mark, eventually. <laughs> just double checking. Well, that's it, measure twice, cut once. Pencil out. There we go, let's make a mark. Got me here. Distinguished, as my sister called me the other day, grey hair in the shot. Get me square out, make a mark, transfer the line. And then uh, get your pull saw out and I'll chop that off. Bench hook out again. Just drill some pile of holes. Eventually. Oh, why am I faffing with that drill? And now for the back. You can't really see much. I do appreciate that. Quick swap out of the bits. Probably drop it away so I don't lose it. One of these days I'm gonna find a free source of music and that is the background. Just very quickly now, just giving uh, putting some screws in these end caps. Just giving them a quick blast with the drill just to get them seated, and I'll get them on. Like I said, like I said earlier, these these nukes I use them for swarm capture. Once there's a swarm in there, I'll let them settle in for a couple of days and then go and move them. So I'll go down to the site where the swarm box is. 
and I'll block the entrance up with some newspaper, some dry grass, something like that. Um, so what the, if I do that late at night, early evening, I know all the bees are in there, and I'll go down the next day, completely block the hole up, put some tape over it, grab the box, chuck it in the car, and then take it out to the apiary. Yeah, bees are a bit strange with the navigation. You either, if you need to move a hive or a nuke, you can either move it an inch at a time or a mile at a time. Or I think, sorry, I think it's a foot at a time or a mile at a time. Yeah, it, the, the small movements, they can adjust how they fly in and where the entrance is. They can adjust the navigation on that. They can see that. But if you move it a couple of feet, they just get completely confused. So you have to basically seal them in. And then once you got them into the apiary and you open the box up, out they fly and they recognise and they... Uh, they know where they are. They just, yeah, it's weird. So, yeah, with this bit, I think I actually managed to screw up, and I did one of the uh, one of them too short, so I just went screw it. I just went for a direct measurement off the box. Just put a notch in, and then very quickly just take it off. And then the bench will go back out. And yeah, move everything out of the way for a minute. This is just one box I did. I did four. I did four in total, and then painted them up later. Now you'll see the finished the finished product at the end of the video. And a nice little still photo. So yeah, here we go. Put one of the caps back on at the end. Yeah, get the right piece. There we go. I'm screwing it in. Now I'm just, uh, once I've done this, I'm just going to take the old lid. Because I've now basically changed the dimensions of the box a little bit. It's obviously now not as wide. So it's a bit longer. Take the old lid and I'll disassemble that and I'll uh, cut that down. Yep, so here we go. And just dis disassembling this lid. Taking all the old screws out. And that'll leave me with the, and I'll just discard the bottom framework, the lip, whatever you're going to call it. And there's the lid on top of the, uh, the box you've just seen me adjusting. Just making sure it's all square and I'll just mark around it. So I know that it'll fit in the new dimensions. Obviously, with this design, I don't need a re an easily removable lid. These are all screwed down. Basically, set and forget. Again, torque screws. I've got some torque spanners, like Allen key type things. And there we go. That will just need cutting down. And that's a renovated new box. Now, times that by four. <laughs> right. See you all in the next video. Don't forget, folks, I'm also on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble. See you over there. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield.